gentlemen, let us prepare our hearts for invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we admit that we would have preferred to have had sunshine warming our bodies this morning. We recognize, however, that we are part of a wonderfully complex natural dynamic, a dynamic by which life is sustained and replenished not only by sunshine, but also by the rain. And so in our anxiety, we thank you for the rain. But even beyond this, Almighty God, we remember the lessons you have taught us over these years. The lessons that 
indicate to us even now that external circumstances can never be the final determinant of the quality of life or the possibilities of a moment. It is because of this lesson that we are here. Some ridiculed, some tried to distract us. They told us we'd never make it, and sometimes we even believed we'd never make it. But Almighty God, we are here. We have come through pain and sorrow. We have had much want. But Almighty God, we have come this far by faith, leaning on your everlasting arms. So no overcast conditions can diffuse our joy. No rain will dampen our excitement, will dampen our enthusiasm. Great and wonderful God, we are here to celebrate. We are here to celebrate the ancestors on whose shoulders we stand. Grandparents, parents, guardians, friends, whose dreams and hopes have sustained us throughout these years. We are here to celebrate Bloomfield College, whose mission has given a burning desire for excellence. We are here to celebrate faculty, staff, peers who struggled with us, encouraged us, and even today are standing with us. Ultimately, God, we give to you all praise and honor and ask that in this morning's proceedings, you will encourage us and challenge us concerning the things that are ahead, even as we say thanks. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm Adrian Shelby, Chair of Bloomfield College, and I am here to congratulate you and welcome you on this phenomenal day. Happily, it isn't raining, but after the rain, there is always the sun, and this is the story of Bloomfield College. I would like to begin by giving you a little statistic, or a few statistics. There are 265 members of the class of 01, and 23% of you are honor students. I think that's right. We also have in our midst some very distinguished people up here on the podium. We have our three uh, honorary degree recipients. Um, we have Arthur Patchett here. Uh, we have Evie Penick Schmitz to my left. And uh, we have McGlay Spector, Dr. McGlay Spector, uh, right behind me in addition to two uh, very distinguished reverends, uh, Reverend uh, Michael Miller and Dr. Um, Bill Howard. So it's a very fabulous day. I want to talk to you a little bit about what your experience has been. I'll only take a few minutes, and that is we recognize the trials and the struggle that you have been through in order to get to this day. We know that you've had the stress of study, the fatigue of coping with families and jobs and study, the sometimes disappointments, the tears, but you are fabulous because you're here. And that shows that you have the dedication and the strength to reach a goal of this magnitude. Now, what is education all about? Um, some people say it's about learning skills that will get you a job, but I don't think that's really what it is. I think it's empowerment, empowerment so that you can go out with confidence and be yourself and accept whatever life has in front of you. But this empowerment will also open doors for societal experiences, for professional experiences, for political experience. So I think this is a marvelous, marvelous day. I just want to say one other thing, that there are three people I would like to talk about that I think are uh, relevant. Dr. Ruth Simmons, who spoke here at our 125th anniversary convocation. At that time, she was provost at Princeton. She then went on to be president of Smith College, and now she is going to be the first African-American president of Brown University. She started 
started as a very poor person living on a tenant farm and she went to school without shoes. But her family knew that she was smart and like your family, they rallied around her and look where she is today. But Dr. Simmons says that education is sort of like a magical place, a secret garden. It's a place where you yourself can have freedom, where you can be hopeful, where you can get away from the problems of everyday life. And I know that you have experienced that. And way back when, at the beginning of our country, James Madison, fourth president, said that learning is part of liberty. And Horace Mann said that education provides the balance in our society and helps to make it a just society. So I congratulate you. Go on, have happiness, and celebrate. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Shelby, members of the Board of Trustees, President Noonan, honored guests, members of the faculty, and the class of 2001. It is indeed an honor to have been asked here today to speak at the commencement ceremony on behalf of the class of 2001. And with this honor comes a formidable responsibility. What words of wisdom can I possibly share with all of you that you have not heard before? After many hours of soul searching, I decided to speak from my heart and share my personal experience in hopes that my journey would help inspire the class of 2001 and all of you here today to reach for your dreams, no matter who or what you are or where you have been. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who had so many dreams that she had difficulty picking just one. As a young woman, all of 18, she sat before a director of nursing who said to her, if you have any doubts, any reservations about nursing, leave now. Reluctantly, she did. She chose another path. For the moment, it was not the right time. As time went on, she remembered watching her two beautiful young children playing in the sand. And she recalled telling her son's best friend that she really wanted to be a nurse. And as he was building his sand castles, he looked up at her with all the sincerity and love in the eyes of an innocent seven-year-old child and simply replied, but you are such a wonderful mommy. She thought he was right. It was not the right time. Time passed, and as she held her dying friend in her arms, she remembered what her friend had said to her during the last year of her life as she cared for her. She said, you would be a wonderful nurse. Follow your dream. That woman was me. It was the right time. Within weeks, I sat in the admissions office of Bloomfield College and began the most extraordinary journey. I had come to Bloomfield College to pursue my baccalaureate degree in nursing, but I had no way of knowing then how this experience would change and enrich my life. Ironically, although I have traveled to other countries and I have lived in two countries other than my own, it was only when I left my home in Glen Ridge, a few miles away, and came to Bloomfield College that I began to experience true diversity and understanding in a multicultural environment. Yes. There is an inherent gift in an environment rich with diversity. This gift can empower each and every one of us to be more tolerant, to be more aware, as well as promote a more compassionate and understanding society. 
The Bloomfield College catalog states, one of the strengths of the college is the rich diversity of its students. I believe it is. This was my experience as well as all my classmates here at Bloomfield College. Speaking of rich diversity, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the nursing graduates of 2001. This is a group of committed individuals who will be caring and compassionate professional nurses. The 14 nursing graduates alone represent seven countries and a diversity of ethnic backgrounds. Our common goal is our ability to persevere when the going gets tough, our desire and passion to care for others, and our mutual dream to be professional nurses. Above and beyond what I learned in my nursing courses, I have learned so much from each and every one of you. Time does not permit me to acknowledge all the truly exceptional administrators, faculty, and staff here at Bloomfield College. But I would like to take the opportunity to personally thank and acknowledge two outstanding faculty members. They have inspired and motivated not only myself, but countless students here at Bloomfield College. Dr. Richard E. Hart, a scholar, a true gentleman, a man, a professor, a philosopher, who personifies the essence of excellence, civility, and gentility. It has been an honor to know you. Dr. Maria Vogt. A woman who has helped me more than she will ever know. Show of hands. Her door was always open to me and the endless parade of students that go in and out of her door on a daily basis. She is a remarkable educator, a mentor, a source of endless inspiration, a student advocate, and one of my heroes. And last, yes. And last but not least, I am sure the class of 2001, along with myself, would like to thank our magnificent families, our friends, our fellow classmates, for all their love and support in helping us to fulfill our dreams. In closing, my message to the class of 2001 and all of you here today is a simple one. Our paths are not always so clear cut, easy, or well defined. But my experience here at Bluefield College has taught me invaluable lessons. Lessons that cannot be found in a textbook, but rather in a spirit generated at Bloomfield College. We are indeed the authors of our own autobiographies. Do what you love and love what you do. Dare to dream. And while you are reaching for your dreams with one hand, reach out for the other and help those around you to reach for theirs. Perhaps that is why God gave us two hands instead of one. Reach, it is the right time. Thank you. to leave Bloomfield College this morning. We would like to begin our journey knowing that we have left a legacy of goal achievement and life accomplishment for future students. We call upon the freshman class president, Terrence Bangston, to aid us in that endeavor.
This book is a symbol of the 2001-2002 all-college theme, A Journey Within and Beyond. At this 128th commencement, the graduating class of 2001 hereby passes on this book, which symbolizes a commitment to learning to the, to the freshman class. Accept it as a compass to guide you during your personal journey of transformation and empowerment at Bloomfield College. On behalf of this year's freshman class, I hereby accept this book, symbolic of life, of learning, and a quest for intellectual growth, and promise to pass it on to others at our commencement. Thank you all very much. Mr. President, it is my honor to present Moses William Howard for the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Reverend Moses William Howard, spiritual and community leader, your influence extends far beyond Bethany Baptist Church in Newark. As a powerful voice in international affairs, you have advanced human rights by reaching out to people across the globe. You have served as president of the North American Regional Conference on Action Against Apartheid, the largest UN-sponsored conference of anti-apartheid activists ever held in the United States and Canada. When Nelson Mandela made his first trip to the United States, you chaired the interfaith worship service at Riverside Church where he was welcomed to New York. Your ministry and concern for others has taken you to more than 25 countries, including Armenia, Cuba, Egypt, Guatemala, China, Somalia, Syria, and Zimbabwe. During the 1979 hostage crisis in Iran, you conducted Christmas worship for the Americans held captive in the U.S. Embassy. Since last October, you have served as pastor of Bethany Baptist Church in Newark, one of the most vibrant churches in the state, one of the most vibrant churches in the country, we might say. At Bethany Baptist, you're translating religious doctrine into daily action and playing a lead role in the Renaissance of Newark. You devote numberless hours to church and community organizations. Before moving to Bethany Baptist, you served for eight years as president of New York Theological Seminary. You've been a board member of the Children's Defense Fund, People for the American Way, and the National Urban League. As a respected expert in international politics and religion, you've appeared on national television programs like the McNeil Lehrer Report and ABC's Nightline. For your compassion for others and your generosity of spirit, Bloomfield College is proud to confer upon you this morning the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa with all the rights and duties and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round. Turn me round, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. Gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. I learned that song when I was quite young in the backwoods of Georgia. And wherever I have gone and whatever I have done in these five decades has been inspired by those words and by the faces and voices that I recall whenever I sing it. And I say to the class of 2001, Luke 12:48 says, one 
For much is given, much is required. But in order to fulfill your responsibility, you must have your own song. Last night at the baccalaureate, I quoted Viktor Frankl, the Austrian-born psychotherapist and Nazi prisoner. He said, the last of the great human freedoms is the one to control your own attitude. So I challenge you, accept the responsibility that you've been given. Think of all the people who have invested their hopes in you. They sit behind you, but with a song deep in your heart and with the clear understanding of your purpose, there is no stopping you now. God bless you. Mr. President, it is my honor to present Arthur Patchett for the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Arthur A. Patchett, we honor you this morning for your pioneering work in the field of medicinal chemistry. During your career at Merck and Company, you've played a lead role in the invention of the sum of the most important cardiovascular drugs available today. You grew up in a working class town in New York State where ambition, hard work, and education propelled you ahead. You became the first person in your family to attend college when you enrolled in Princeton University. At Princeton, you developed a love of chemistry and you graduated Phi Beta Kappa. You were a Fulbright scholar at Cambridge University and received your doctorate from Harvard with high praise from your mentor, the Nobel laureate, R.B. Woodward. After working for the National Institutes of Health, you joined Merck Research Laboratories, where you soon became the head of Synthetic Organic Chemistry Department. Ten years later, you were named head of the new Leeds Discovery Department, where your research led to the discovery of the blockbuster antihypertensive drugs Vasotec and Prinavil. Your work on Vasotec, Prinavil, Mevacor, and Zocor has helped the lives of millions and resulted, not incidentally, in more than $63 billion in sales. Merck consistent, conservatively estimates that your work on Mevacor and Zocor alone have saved more than 230 lives, uh, 230,000 lives, I dare say, some of whom are in this family. Your broad interests in discovery methods led you to initiate the screening system which has produced most of the leads for Merck's research programs worldwide for the past 15 years. You hold more than 200 patents. You publish more than 175 scholarly works. Your groundbreaking contributions to medicinal chemistry, Bloomfield College is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa with all the rights and duties and responsibilities. trustees, President Noonan, faculty, and the class of 2001. I thank you very much for this special honor and for the opportunity to say a few words here today. I'm very proud to be receiving my degree with you, the graduating class of 2001. It's a great day for us and our families. Much hard work and the support of friends and family are being recognized here today. As President Noonan mentioned, I was the first in my family to graduate from college. 
I know that is true of many of you as well. Neither my father, my mother, or any of my grandparents or great-grandparents went to college. They were mostly farmers or masons or carpenters or builders, contractors. When I went to college, my mother, in her own nice way, wanted me to become a writer. I think she felt uh, somehow I w that would be a step up for me in a professional way. But I had no talent for writing then, nor do I now. <laughs> In, 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 perhaps, in fact, there is a destiny in our genes because I became a builder just like my ancestors, only now I'm a builder of molecules. As a child, I almost died of pneumonia. I remember being taken to the hospital desperately ill. I was probably six or seven years old. It was in the 30s. And I probably would not have survived, except at that time, the new sulfa drugs were being introduced. And I was given one of them, probably with sulfathiazole, and I survived. And I never forgot my indebtedness to that uh, medication. In fact, I've spent the last 46 years of my life working at the design of medicines. And now, it's often a very frustrating, and it is certainly a socially isolated kind of work. But it is my passion and I have the right temperament for it. I've been fortunate in that way. It's my hope that each of us recognizes what we do particularly well and what we love doing. And then we let us have faith in ourselves and do it and do it. My discoveries to lower uh, cholesterol, to treat high blood pressure came after I was 50 years old. They came from my motivations, my work over a number of years, not from any brilliance or any educational advantage that I would have had to trace back for like 20 years. There's much frustration and failure in research just as there is in everyday life. But my career testifies to the old truism that perseverance is the most important contributor to achievement. Several years ago, you set out to earn a college degree. You have done it. You have met that challenge. Please take pride in that achievement and continue to set goals which enlarge your unique talents and allow you to contribute to the world around you as only you can. Congratulations and best wishes. It is my honor to present Magali Spector for the degree of Doctor of Science in Norris Causa. Magali Spector is a distinguished physicist with Lucent Technologies. We honor you for helping shape the future of optical communications after surmounting enormous obstacles. You grew up in Cuba, where you overcame poverty to earn a degree in physics from the University of Havana. In college, you became an expert in chess, a game you had taught yourself by reading books and eventually 
You won the Cuban National Chess Championship. You joined a research institute after graduation, but saw little room for advancement. So in 1980, you and your eight-year-old daughter fled Cuba and risked your lives as political refugees in the Mariel boat lift. Unable to speak much English, you moved into a small apartment in Elizabeth and spent a year of hard factory work to support your daughter and yourself. You went to school at night to learn the language, and then you joined Bell Labs. To advance in your career, you pursued a master's degree while working full-time and caring for a growing family. Over a nine-year period, you obtained a master's degree in electrical engineering and a doctorate in physics. At Bell Labs and Lucent, you've made major contributions to physics, including advanced materials, devices for lasers, and high-speed optical transport systems. You've helped pioneer optical technology, one of the fastest growing sectors of the communications revolution. You also devote your time to shaping the lives of those around you. You're an active member of the Hispanic Association for Lucent Employees, the Diversity Committee, and a mentor for women and Hispanics in the summer research program. Glamour Magazine recently named you one of the 10 women of the millennium for your professional and personal achievements. For your pivotal contributions to scientific knowledge and for inspiring all of us to maintain high standards, Bloomfield College is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa with all the rights and duties and responsibilities thereto. Graduating today, faculty, families, and friends. Today I feel highly honored to be here with all of you to receive a degree from Bloomfield College. We may be meeting for the first time today, but we, in fact, have walked similar roads in our way here. We have fought similar struggles. Probably we have experienced common failures. In order to be here graduating today, we have to overcome many more obstacles than any other student graduating from other colleges. Many of you, like myself, have to work, to raise a family, and to comply with all the college degree requirements. How many times we needed to gather all our strengths when a child got sick, there was a deadline at work, and we have to hand in a homework the next day. By completing your degree under those circumstances, you have achieved much more than the intellectual growth. You have built your character. You have paved the road to attain whatever goals you set in your life. Your future is bright because you have demonstrated that there is no obstacle too big for you to overcome. And you may still encounter many of them on the way to your next goal. But when they come, remember today. Remember that dreams come true when you work hard and you don't give up. This ordinary degree I dedicated to my beloved daughter who died before seeing me graduating. I dedicated to my son, who is here with me, with me today, and who will start college this year. <laughs> to my husband, who has supported me in my career. To my stepson, who plans to be a doctor, and he's here with me today. Here. To every one of you who will help me to inspire others to reach their dreams. And I particularly thank President Newman for giving me this opportunity to become one of the Bloomfield graduate class of 2001.
President Noonan, it is my honor to present Elizabeth Penix Schmitz for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Elizabeth Penick Schmitz, we honor you today for your achievements as an author and a community leader. You inspire us with your writings and remind us of the importance of social responsibility. You're the author of the manuscript, The Lady Elizabeth Percy, an interpretive biography of the Duchess of Somerset. You've also written several books for young readers, including in the room across the hall, Miss Janet and the Beautiful Amara, and the inspirational Trip to Glory. You were born and raised in Montclair and attended Wellesley College where you nurtured your talents as a writer until illness ended your undergraduate work. Upon recovering, you became the director of publicity for the Charles Scribner and Sons Publishing Company in New York City. You were later married and lovingly raised six children. Your writings, as well as your community service, have always reflected your strong dedication to family. As a leader in your community, you've served on the boards of many cultural, educational, and service organizations, including the Montclair Art Museum. You've volunteered in the literacy program and have been active in the cause of child welfare. You've been president of the Family and Children's Association of Northern New Jersey, and for many years you were a member of the Child Placement Review Board in Newark. In touching the lives of children and their families, you have provided our communities with renewed hope. You're currently working for hospice, providing comfort and support for patients with terminal illnesses. As a friend of Bloomfield College, your generosity has helped make our new library a reality and has had a profound impact on faculty, students, administrators, and trustees. For the example you've set for your unswerving commitment to the public good, Bloomfield College is proud this morning to confer upon you two degrees. One, the Bachelor of Arts degree you never received from Wellesley College. And two, the degree Doctor of Humane Letters with all amorous powers of all the rights and duties and responsibilities there to appertain. You'll see me listed under remarks in the program. I think the previous men and women who have addressed you have spoken so remarkably, there's absolutely nothing I could add to what they've said. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts please rise? conferred upon me by the State of New Jersey and by the Board of Trustees of Bloomfield College, I happily confer upon you the degree this morning, Bachelor of Arts. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science please invested in me by the state of New Jersey and by the Board of Trustees of Bloomfield College, I happily confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science. Yes. 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 
so big. <laughs> Excuse me. 
me. Kimberly Joy Clark. Kareem 
Martinez.
Lita Dill.
Joseph.
Marta Wilczewska, Suma Kublar. Maria Purita Ibalie. I invite all persons here to stand for the benediction. <laughs> Go now into the cotton thrust of life. Seek after excellence in all of your pursuits, integrity in all your dealings, compassion in all your relationships. Go in the confidence that God who has been with you is ahead of you. Walk boldly with confidence, experiencing always the presence of God. And look to that final moment when you shall hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Go in peace and the God of grace be with you all.